Well, welcome to this seminar introducing RAPID. The objectives of this short seminar are to provide you with a general introduction to RAPID and really to understand the key advantages of using RAPID to build cross-platform applications using CAGEN. For the agenda, we're going to start off with a short background to why we decided to build RAPID and the environment in which most CAGEN sites find themselves today. Secondly, discuss the, rep the objectives of RAPID itself. Then a short technical overview followed by a demo. Um, and then we'll have a, a Q&A for the live seminar. Okay, to start with the, the background, covering the, the reasons most sites are still using GEN. And in no particular order, the, the key strength that I think most CA Gen sites would agree on is the maintainability of the applications, the stability of the applications, the fact that you can relatively easily transfer an application from one platform to another, um, the reduced need for technical skills, and the scalability from a small one or two person team all the way up to some projects having hundreds of developers. These are all key strengths of Gen. They were key strengths 30 years ago and they still are today. And really you've probably got your own reasons why you're still in Gen, hence the, the plus plus plus. A typical customer situation is that Gen has been used for, for many years um, and most sites have a significant investment in CA Gen, both in terms of the models um, which equate to the applications and business knowledge that's embedded inside the models and the CA Gen skills, processes, know-how that you've built up over those years. And that, that is a significant investment that really most sites don't want to throw away. For the servers and batch side of things, I think everyone would agree Gen is incredibly strong. The, the, the systems built with Gen are very stable, very easy to maintain. But for the UI, that's probably in some cases a bit more challenging. If we look at the typical user interfaces that you can build with CA Gen, um, accessing typically a server, which could be on the mainframe or Unix or Windows, um, it could be a block mode interface, a Windows GUI interface, browser, um, you can also use the proxies and write the clients outside of Gen, accessing the Gen servers through a proxy, and then write the client really in, in any technology that can access a, a standard proxy like Java or .NET. And then for the mobile side of things, well, that's where probably Gen is at the moment is, is lacking. There is no mobile capability. Some of the typical issues, and um, there's probably could spend all day talking about the individual issues, but the, the key points that that we hear are for block mode, block mode character based interfaces are quite low functionality, difficult to integrate with other applications, and difficult to migrate to other platforms from the mainframe. For the Windows GUI, a common theme is the cost of ownership is high, distributing the clients to hundreds or thousands of individual workstations and keeping them up to date as the underlying operating system or runtimes or Visual C runtimes, um, all of that um, as OCXs come in and out of support, the cost of ownership of maintaining a significant number of Windows desktops is high. Historically, using Gen to build a browser application um, has been quite challenging for many sites because it's it's not easy to migrate from GUI or block mode to web. There are significant differences between the platforms and, and the standard gen web functionality is a subset of the GUI functionality which, which can give rise to issues when you're trying to move from Windows GUI to browser. And we have a separate s seminar which will go into those details uh, in, in go into that in more detail tomorrow. For those of you building the clients outside of Gen, um, the 
typical issues there are you, you're having to build the UI in a completely different set of tools. So trying to integrate multiple tools and development teams with different s skill sets introduces another set of challenges. And you start to lose many of the benefits of Gen of having a model-based platform independent tool where everything is in a single model, one integrated tool set. And then for mobile, um, up until now, um, there's been no Gen capability for building mobile applications. So that's the current state of affairs with regards to user interfaces. And really that brings us on to those are the, some of the key reasons we decided to build Rapid to enable the development of modern dynamic user interfaces using CAGen, but providing a wider variety of platform choice for desktop applications, browser applications, and mobile. A key objective was to provide an easy implementation for existing Gen applications. So take as a starting point the fact that most Gen sites will have a substantial investment in either block mode or Windows GUI applications and want to make it easy for them to migrate to a Rapid application using the same gen skills and models that you are already familiar with. In this short presentation I'm only going to touch on some of the key aspects of Rapid in terms of the technical overview. Um, starting off with the architecture, some of the key concepts of modeling, multiple platform support, the runtime, and the Rapid API. For modeling, essentially your modeling is the same as you currently use Gen. So you're using standard Gen techniques like dialog flow design, action diagramming, and user interface design. So there's, it's using the same tools that you're already familiar with supplemented with a plugin, a toolset plugin called the Rapid Designer, which enables you to add in additional properties about the user interface that Rapid uses at runtime to provide a more sophisticated user interface design. A key part of all of that is that the definitions that are defined using the Rapid plugin are stored inside the model as custom objects, which means that when you migrate a procedure step the Rapid definitions are automatically migrated with the p-step and there's no change to your current model management procedures whether you upload, download, model copies, object migrations all of those processes are completely unaffected by Rapid because of the way the Rapid plugin stores the objects within the model as custom objects attached to the procedure step. For multiple platform support if we take as a starting point a standard Gen server, then you can use Rapid as a desktop application to connect to the Gen server. And that desktop application essentially is a replacement for a Windows GUI um, application. The key benefit of using Rapid on the desktop is the applications could be made self-updating. So you don't, you don't, once you've installed the application on the desktop, you never need to update it again. Um, it can be self-updating because of the technology that's used. For the other platforms, we use an application server to serve the application to a variety of user interface devices. That could be a browser, or an iOS client, or an Android client. So for each of these platforms, for example desktop, we support not only Windows, but other platforms like Mac, OS X, Linux, and Unix as well. For the application server, essentially any JEE compliant application server like WebSphere or WebLogic or JBoss. For the browser, any modern browser that supports JavaScript would be supported, including most mobile browsers like Safari or Chrome on mobile devices as well as Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer on desktop devices. And for the iOS and Android platforms, Rapid uses a native client, so we're not running it as a browser application on the device, we're running it as a native client which uses native controls to render the user interface. And the key aspect of that is firstly the look and feel is similar to what the users would expect on that device 
and it offers much better performance than a, br a browser application on the mobile device. So that's covering the platforms, multiple platforms that Rapid supports. For the runtime, um, I'm going to divide this into two aspects, the client and the server. On the client, the Rapid client, um, you design the action diagrams and procedure steps using Gen, and then you generate the action diagram code targeting Java, and use the Rapid runtime, which replaces completely the Gen um, of the functions of the Gen GUI runtime. So that's all Rapid based. It's developed in Java as a cross-platform runtime using standard proven frameworks. On the server side, there is no change. So your gen servers are unaffected. The same servers that you currently use today to support a gen GUI client would also support a Rapid client. So the same servers could support both existing gen clients and any Rapid clients that you build. There's no change at all on the server side. Rapid also comes with a very comprehensive API. Um, there's currently over 180 methods and properties that are accessed using dot notation action diagram statements. Um, so for example, we have an API methods for um, local persistent storage like cookies on a browser, and there's an example down below, or for interacting with JavaScript, for file upload, download. And on mobile devices, um, the Rapid API would enable, for example, you to take a picture with the camera, um, geolocation, interact with the phone on the device, etc. Rapid also comes with a set of what we call extension libraries. And the extension libraries allow you to access a standard Java library using Gen Action Diagram code. The advantage of this is that instead of writing a call to an external library using an external action block, you can code your calls to those libraries using Gen Action Diagram statements using the extension library that we provide. So some examples we've already built are application reporting using Jasper reports, or PDF file creation using Apache PDF box, or for example one customer had a requirement to generate quick response codes and we provided an extension library for the Google Zebra Crossing library so that you could generate QR codes from within action diagrams. Looking at a bit more detail at the user interface, covering widgets, responsive design, a unique concept for Rapid called Frames, and developing multilingual applications. So these are just a, a few of the topics that um, we could cover with the user interface. So for widgets, um, Rapid provides an extended set of widgets going beyond the, the set of controls that you would be familiar with with CAGEN to include native controls for date time pickers, progress bars, sliders, spinners, things like that. Um, comprehensive support for list boxes, so we can support tree controls, editable grids. Um, the user can have very fine control over a list box to resize columns, place bitmaps into a list box, um, sort columns, that sort of thing. On the mobile platforms, iOS and Android, the controls are implemented using the native controls for that device. So we're using standard APIs to the mobile device for rendering the controls. So they look and behave ex exactly like the user would expect them to on each platform. And if you have a need for more fancy controls, we also have support for Java and JavaScript controls, which is sort of conceptually like an OCX control, but whereas OCX controls are very Microsoft specific and not available on non-Microsoft platforms, with the Java and JavaScript controls, they're available across all of the platforms, so the mobile platforms, um, all the desktop platforms and browser platforms. 
Responsive layout, um, you may have heard people talk about responsive design and responsive layout. And essentially what that means is that if you have an application, um, let's say on a mobile device, and you change the orientation of the mobile device, then the controls are repositioned or resized to have a, a, a good layout on whatever orientation you choose and, and that would include different device sizes whether you have a, a phone with a small screen or a tablet or a browser with a very, on a very large screen you're taking full advantage of the available screen size and not designing for one particular screen size as is traditional with, with Gen and with Rapid we, we have um, facility for responsive layout where you specify in the Rapid designer the layout rules and then the layout is automatically handled by the rapid runtime so that the application is responsive and we'll take a look at that in the demo frames is a another innovation in rapid and essentially a frame is an area in a window into which you can load another window um, so for example the you could load into one window a detailed dialog box from another procedure step or you could load multiple windows implemented as a tab control. Frames we basically introduced because they're essential if you want to su support the transition from a, a multi-windowed GUI to a browser or mobile environment. Typical GUI applications have many different windows open at the same time and the user can switch between them easily on a Windows platform but on a mobile or browser platform they don't easily support multi modeless windows and so it, to make a transition from a, a GUI to a browser where you want to be able to show multiple windows at the same time um, we introduce the concept of frames to support that and then finally for multilingual applications um, we designed Rapid from the ground up to support easy translation of applications into many different languages without having to design each language as a separate window in the, in the toolset. So you design your window in one language in the toolset and then all of the application strings we generate as Unicode strings into a separate string properties file which can then be translated into as many languages as you want and then at runtime Rapid runtime will automatically detect the user's locale and then load the appropriate string resources for that user's own language so we can support as many languages as you care to provide translations for and because all of Rapid is, is generated as Unicode then you don't have to worry about co-page different co-pages um, Unicode UTF-8 would support all of the common characters that you might need in your application So, in summary, um, the key aspects of Rapid are firstly protection of investment, both in terms of the investment you've made in your existing CA Gen models, whether you've built block mode applications or GUI client server applications or web applications, using the, the same models and existing skill sets that you already have experience in but enabling you to go way beyond the current capabilities of Gen to build much more dynamic state-of-the-art applications with also this cross-platform capability that you design the application once and you can run the application on multiple platforms what I'm going to do now is give you a short demo um, you already will have used a Rapid application in booking for this seminar. So what you see here is the booking application that you're probably familiar with. Um, but there's probably some, some interesting aspects to this that as a standard gen application you might think, hmm, how did they do that? For example, if we take a look at the responsive design, as I increase the size of the window, then the controls move up and down to take advantage of the window size. I also have these two areas here. I have a left-hand area and a right-hand area and this divider between them. And this is actually a separate procedure step. So this is an example of a frame where I have a 
list of events and a separate detail procedure step on the right. But if I was running on a very small screen, then the responsive nature rapid that automatically then becomes a pop-up on a small screen or becomes a frame on a larger screen. Also here, this list here, this is actually just a list box. But the list box like you've never probably seen before in Gen, because if I take a look at the the model that was used to generate this application, and I take the event registration page and show you the window design, here is the list box that you're seeing on the screen. So there, if we look at here, this data here is coming from this list box. But what I've done with Rapid, in terms of the designer, is firstly specified the tracking information. So I've said, for example, this list box, I want to resize both horizontally and vertically as my window resizes. And these two controls down here, which are these guys, I want those moved vertically. And the list box itself, I'm laying out using a style called a row template. So instead of it being a normal cell row column type list box, it's a template where each of the columns in the list box can be positioned exactly where I want it in the cell. So for example, the date, I want at that place position, and I want it in this font with a blue foreground. The product is actually an image, so I've implemented this as an image, which is this product image here. And the name of the event, I've put in a slightly bigger font and made it bold. So you can see here, that is the layout of the list box in a style that's probably much more intuitive and familiar for browser and mobile applications than a straightforward old style list box. And if I look at the same application on a mobile device, if I just bring up my bring up my iPad here. do that again. So I'm just going to use a product called Reflector. Which allows me to, there we go, mirror. And I'm going to launch the application. So here is the event application running as a native iOS application and I can scroll up and down and select an event and register for an event and you can see you've got things like pop-ups. So this is a standard CAGEN generated application but running as a native iOS application. Okay, what I'd like to do now is show you a simple enhancement to the application. So what I'd like to do is add in a date control that allows me to filter the events by date. So I'm going to go to my CAGEN model and in the action diagram, i just close the designer, in the action diagram I'm going to add in an import view which is the start date and I'm going to copy that to the export view so there I've got my views. And in the event which refreshes the list from the database, I'm just going to filter out based on the date. So if the event that I got back from the database has a date that's less than the date that I'm interested in, then I'm going to throw away that record. So there's a simple bit of code. So I've changed my action diagram and I'm going to now generate that for Java. And now I need to place my date on the window. So I'm going to add in my 
my date field and place my date field. Let's have it here. Okay, so there's there's my date field. And then when the user changes the value, I want to refresh my list. So I'm going to call the refresh event. And then finally, I don't want to put in a date in that format. I want to use a date picker. So uh, this is where I'm going to use the rapid designer. And I'm going to choose my start date. And I'm going to enhance it to say, actually, I don't want a standard default date field. I want a date picker. So there, I've added my date. So now I'm going to bring up the rapid generator. And I'm going to regenerate the rapid the, the procedure step. It's now building it, which is compiling the Java code. And it's now assembling it, which is assembling the application, um, depending on what platform you're assembling for. It could be the WAR file to deploy to an application server. For testing purposes, we have a very neat facility called this OSGI server, which is running here. Um, and what the OSGI server allows you to do is test your application very quickly. Um, so I'm just going to rerun my application by double clicking on it. And here's the date field that we just added. And so if I choose the date and maybe say events after the 16th of February, then the list is refreshed as you can see. So if I choose the 23rd and we'll turn it off, I see all of the dates. And if I go back to my mobile application and bring that up again, there's the date field that you can see again. And notice here that it uses the standard, if you're familiar with Apple iOS, the standard iOS date control, which all familiar users of an Apple device will be familiar with. And there it's filtering my, my dates. So that's the, the same application running on the iOS platform. Okay, so in a very short time frame, um, hopefully that's given you a flavor for the capabilities of Rapid. Um, we have some f a further set of seminars on the product. So tomorrow we have a, a, a greater look at transforming a GUI application to the web with Rapid. Next week we have a seminar on mobilizing your gen applications, i.e. taking them to a mobile world, and also block mode to web with Rapid, and then a series of seminars on model management, tracing on the mainframe, quality assurance checking, and code coverage testing. So if you haven't yet signed up for those events, you may want to take a look at those as well. Well, thank you very much. I'm now going to stop the recording.